In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Praise God, friends. I want to hope that I'm going to be loud enough because uh, uh, some people are saying that they're not hearing me properly and I hope uh, this is going to be addressed. To, tonight, I want to share with you on the power of praise. Power of praise. Power of praise. And our meditation scripture is the book of Acts chapter 16. And this is the experience of Saint Paul and Silas in prison. And those who are not familiar with the story, it is in Acts chapter 16. You can read um, uh, from verse 25. And I just want to read a portion of it and, and we, we, we have a meditation from it. So it says, about midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook all the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for light and rushed in. Trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. This is the word of the Lord. And our topic is the power of praise. The power of praise. And I want you to see the two different kinds of Christians in this text. The first kind of Christians are those who pass through challenges and they either become silent like the other prisoners we read about when Paul and Silas were singing praises to God, they were silent, they were just listening. So the first group of Christians, when they have challenges, they have problems. They do not praise God. And sometimes it even gets worse. They complain throughout. Throughout. Then the second kind of Christians are these. Those who get challenges and problems, but they praise God in their prison. They praise God in their pain. They praise God in their persecution. They praise God all the way. Their hands can be bound. They can be locked in prison, but that will not stop their spirit. That will not stop their faith. They are believers whose faith cannot be stopped by the prison. You can put them in prison and their faith will shine brighter. You can chain them, you can bind them up, and their faith will shine brighter, brighter, brighter. And then there are those who you put in prison and they lose their faith. 
and I want to advise you and also myself, may we imitate Paul and Silas that even when you are in prison, when you are in challenges, when you are in pain, when you are in an uncomfortable situation, you will still with gladness raise your voice and praise God and sing hymns of praise and worship the Lord and have faith in God. This is the challenge with so many of us believers, with so many of us Christians. When it comes to, to problems, we, we, our faith is shaken. And we ask so many questions. Why like this? Why God like this? Instead of saying why, Instead of crying out loud, instead of complaining, let us imitate Paul and Silas and we burst forth in songs of praise and worship. No, praise God. Like Job, when they came and told him the bad news, the death of his children, death of his servants, the loss of his property, while well, he said, I came from my mother's womb naked and naked will I go. Pray, blessed be the name of God. How many Christians really today have the liver, the heart, the pancreas <laughs> to say you lose your job and you say, blessed be God. Or you're in a relationship, they chuck you, you say, blessed be God. Or, or you don't have money and you say, blessed be God. How many? How many? This is the reason why we should imitate Paul and Silas in these areas of, of our Christian life. Where there is a challenge, where there is pain, where there is confusion, where there is doubt, where there is suffering, where there is a prison, there is a chain. Let's lift our hands in praise and in pure praise of God. And not with an attitude or with a mentality that He will set me free when I praise Him. That's up to Him if He chooses. But with the mentality that no matter what happens to me, I should praise the Lord in prison. I should praise the Lord, and out of prison, I should praise the Lord. In chains, I should praise the Lord. Without chains, I should praise the Lord. This is why Joseph was more noble as a slave than Potiphar. Joseph was more blessed in that prison than Pharaoh, who was on, on the throne. John the Baptist was more dignified, was more noble, was more admirable in prison than Herod. He was more glorious when his head was on the platter than when Herod was on his robes. In Christians, we have to learn this in pain to praise God, in suffering to praise God, in prison to praise God. Praise God. Now, these things have happened, these occurrences have happened, they're not, not only to show us what occurred in their lives, but to also give us the mystery, the power in praising God. And what does the Bible say? Bible says that that about midnight, 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 when others are sleeping, when others are resting, there are people who wake up to praise God. It's not a sin to sleep the whole night. It's not. But it is something noble, something admirable, 
to find some time in the middle of the night and wake up and praise God like Paul. Maybe you may not maybe particularly set an alarm or you can if you choose to. But there are those times also you automatically find yourself wake up in the middle of the night. Maybe you're going for a call. Short or long, once you wake up, use that opportunity to speak to God. It can be one whole sentence. It can be a lifting up of the hands. Five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, as your spirit will allow. As your strength can carry you. But when you wake up in the middle of the night, please pray. Worship God. Praise the Lord. Commune with God. And there are those people, you, you just find yourself you're woken up. Maybe from maybe from a, a, a terrible dream or something. Pray. Or you can intentionally decide and say, at such time in the night, I will wake up to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord. And now listen to the secret of their midnight praise. This is what the Bible says. It says, Silas, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake. And this earthquake did not only occur and stop during the time of St. Paul. Every authentic Christian that authentically, truly, in truth and in spirit, gives praise and worship to God, there will always be an earthquake in the place of prison, in the place of bondage, in the place of chains, there will be an earthquake, a mighty earthquake. And then it says, it was so severe that the foundations of the jail shook. This is what God does to the enemy, to the camp of the enemy. As you lift your hands and praise God, the enemy comes receive mighty, mighty, mighty earthquake that shake, shakes their foundation, the very foundation of their prison, the very foundation of the bondages they put people in, the very foundation of all those establishments of their altars. They are shaken from the foundations. And then he continues and he says, he says, all the doors flung open. And which are these doors? The doors that the enemy had shut to keep you in prison, to keep you in pain, to keep you suffering, to keep you in darkness while you are praising God in the spiritual. Doors are opened. Doors are opened. Gates are opened. The, 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 the stumbling blocks are pulled down. Mountains are leveled. Mountains are brought low and valleys are filled up as you're praising God. The walls of Jericho, they crumble down with a shout of praise. With a shout of praise, with a shout of praise, while they were marching around the city of, 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 of around the wall of Jericho, they did not they did not use any instrument, any 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 machinery to pull down the wall. The only machinery they used, the only instrument they used to pull down the walls of Jericho was praising God, praising God, and they marched seven times. Seven times on that final day, the march seven times. Seven times is showing perfection, perfect praise of God. Will tear down the walls of Jericho. Will shake foundations of prisons. Will open gates that the enemy has closed, or even gates. Not necessarily that the enemy has closed, but gates that had not yet been opened. They are opened through the power of praising God. Praise, praise. 
And it continues and says, and the chains of all were pulled loose. That means the chains fell. This is the power of praise. Chains fall when we praise God. When we praise the Lord with sincere hearts. With sincere hearts. By the way, let me tell you something. The reason why so many people, they remain in their prisons. Sometimes the reason why so many people remain in their prisons, so many people remain under chains, so many doors are, are closed for so long. It's because when men are in, the in, in prisons, in chains, and in, in these bondages, instead of lifting their voices and hands to praise God, they complain. And yet the secret to unlocking those doors, the secret to shaking those foundations is in praise. These are things, these things I'm talking about, they are things you can do in practice and see the word of God manifest in your life. Praise God. Praise God. And even if sometimes when you're sick, you feel sick, you get sicknesses, you praise God. Prisons will be shaken to the foundations, to the foundations. This, this praise is one of the instruments of spiritual warfare. Instruments of spiritual warfare. As you're praising God, the devil perceives a war song. The devil perceives a military noise, a military shouting. And as the devil hears enchanting of warriors, a war song, immediately in the spiritual, things begin to happen. Chains begin to be broken. Doors begin to be flung open. Prisons are shaken to their foundations. This such is the power of praising God, especially in the time of darkness, in the time of pain, in the time of suffering, in the time of sadness. Praise the Lord. And what happened? The, the prison guard, the jailer, woke up and saw the prison door was open. Let me tell you, that jailer was a greater prisoner than Paul and Silas. While Paul and Silas were in a physical prison, a man-made prison that jailer was in a spiritual prison and so as the as the doors flung open for Paul and the chains fell also God was up some God was about to do something to this jailer who himself was in a terrible prison the spiritual prison the prison of the soul he drew his sword and was about to kill himself thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out, loud voice, do no harm to yourself, we are all here. Just look at the noble character of Paul. The door has been opened, the gates are open, the chains that they are tied you with have fallen and he still remained there. How many Christians are, have integrity at heart, honesty at heart? Paul could have moved away, but he stayed. He stayed. And he asked for a light and rushed in and trembling with fear. He asked for a light. Yes, he asked for a light to go in where Paul was 
But when in actual sense, he needed light for his soul. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. And I know many people have done injury to this particular verse. They read it and they just sing, you say, you see, just believe. It's just near believing, just professing that Jesus is the Lord and Savior, Son of God, who died, rose again and went to heaven. And chawa, you are saved, sins forgiven, past, present, future. And even if you're caught doing terrible abominations, you are saved. That's what some people preach, and which is a terrible error and injury to this. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will do what he says. You will do what he says. This, this, this one statement is, is a pregnant statement. So if the man believed, Paul put in everything. Baptism, he put it there. Eucharist, he put there. Loving your neighbor, he put there. Fellowshipping with the believers. All under that one statement. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your family will be saved. It was not automatic for the family to be saved. But if the head of the family is saved, Research has shown that most of the other family members will also receive salvation. If the head is saved, the rest will be saved. By inspiration and imitation. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. And while he was bathing their wounds, you know, and, and, and he, when Paul spoke to them the word of God, also God was bathing the wounds of this man, wounds in his soul. He was bathing and healing, binding them up. He brought them up to his house and provided a meal with his household, rejoiced at having come to faith in God. So the rejoicing was not that Paul and Silas didn't run out of prison, but the rejoicing that they had come to faith, faith in God. And he gave them a meal while he himself was given a greater meal, the word of God, the word of God, the gift of salvation. So the secret, and you see, all this came through the power of praising God, through the power of praise. You praise God. And then wait for the results. Praise God sincerely. Especially when you're in prison. When you are in jail. And by that I mean when you are in challenges. And you will see tremendous power. God bless you. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the bell button. And have a blessed night.